So it is now midsummer. your family and friends are having barbecues left and right, and you're sitting around wondering, what should I bring? Well, if you suck at cooking, but you're an avid collector of knives, why not flex on your boys by making the ultimate fruit platter? And as with everything in life, you need to choose the right knife for the job. And when it comes to cooking, my general rule of thumb is, the larger the fruit, the larger the knife. And with that being said, we're going to start off with the largest piece of fruit that's going to end up being kind of the centerpiece of this entire fruit platter, and that's going to be our large watermelon. And now there's a million different ways that you can cut up your watermelon. Just search online. There's different designs, different serving techniques. But for this, I'm actually going to keep it kind of simple. Just chop off the top on an angle. I'm going to now ball out all of the watermelon that's on the inside. This is not only going to make the watermelon really easy to serve, but it's also going to create its own little fruit basket that we can then stuff with other kinds of fruit. And as you can see, as you core it out you're going to collect a ton of juice on the bottom don't just throw this out i would save it and you can make it into some cocktails and just a little tip here the colder the fruit is that you're cutting the easier it'll be not only will it be a little bit more firm but it's going to release a lot fewer of the juices and now on to our second of the melons and this is going to be a honeydew melon uh, which just so happens to be my favorite fruit and i mean not only is it tasty but look at those melons and you don't have to be too precise with this one as i'm just going to core it out and then i'm going to ball it all up like i did the watermelon Again, it's not only going to look really good, but it's also going to be really easy for everyone to just pick out whatever they want. And because I know not everyone loves honeydew as much as I do, you know, which is okay, I won't judge you too hard, but I mean, come on, honeydew is a serious sleeper. And with our honeydew melon being done, we're on to our next melon, which is going to be the cantaloupe. And I mean, cantaloupe is okay, you know, I'm not going to throw too much shade at it, but uh, it's definitely not on the same level as my honeydew. And like the last two melons, I'm just going to ball out the flesh on the inside. That'll make it really easy to serve and for everyone to pick out whatever they want. And now that we're done with the melons moving on to another classic we're gonna have some pineapple and because I find the outside of a pineapple fairly wicked looking I'm gonna use it as another serving bowl and just because the anatomy of a pineapple is a little bit different here I'm just going to core it out because you can't really ball it up and I want to use the outside of the pineapple again as a serving dish and now please pay close attention to how I'm actually going to cut up the pineapple as you can see I'm cutting around the super hard core bit that's in the middle because there's nothing worse than grabbing what you think is going to be a nice juicy cube of pineapple, and it turns out to be that hardcore bit from the middle. And believe me, you ain't going to be impressing any of your friends or family by leaving that hardcore bit in the middle. And I will say, you do want to have a good amount of towels on you, just because as you cut up all this fruit, there's going to be a lot of juice everywhere. And you can also see that as I'm done cutting up fruit, I'm throwing them into bowls, and then they're going right into the fridge. That's because obviously it's going to take me some time to cut everything up, and I want everything to stay as cold as possible. And now that we're moving on to the smaller of the fruits, like an orange here, I'm going to use a slightly smaller knife because we're not going to need that massive chef's knife to cut up a small orange. Plus, I like to really challenge myself to see how few of the skin pieces I get after peeling an orange. And I really do love this technique. Not only is it easy, but it's really fast if you want to peel a lot of oranges. And don't forget that on the inside of the orange, there's that little stem bit that you don't want to leave in there. You want to take that out. And other than that, I'm pretty much just going to tear it up in the way that God intended it because you want people to know that they're actually grabbing an orange. And now that we're done with the oranges, we're going to move on to the apples. And here I'm just going to do one red apple and one green apple. You know, you got the sour apple and you got the sweet apple, which is going to be really nice. And now I look at these smaller fruits kind of as garnish fruits. They're not going to be the main pieces of this fruit platter, but they are going to add a little extra variety to this. And when your knife skills aren't that great and you're afraid of the overall presentation of your fruit platter, just have a lot of different kinds of fruit, different variety, that'll make it seem even better. And now we're on to the dreaded mango. Now a lot of people struggle with cutting into a mango just because the seed is such an odd shape, but if you can find that stem on the very bottom and you can kind of see which direction the mango lies, there's going to be a thin side and a thick side. If you cut down that thin side lengthwise, you should be able to cut around the seed. And if you can successfully cut around the seed, you're pretty much 95% of the way there. Just go slow and practice. And after we cut both of the heads off, you can see the seed that's on the inside and how it extends almost from pole to pole. And now this is the part that a lot of people are really afraid of, and it actually helps to have a really sharp knife. Uh, just really take your time, go slow, and uh, really feel for how close that knife is to the actual skin. Again, the sharper it is, the easier it's gonna be, and that's because you won't have to force the knife through and into the back of your hand. Again, just take your time, it's not a race. And if you did everything right and you you really took your time 
you're gonna end up with some beautiful cubes of mango and not a bloody palm. And you can leave the mango cut up like this. I think it looks really cool, but because I'm going to actually be stuffing it back into the pineapple, I'm going to cut all the little cubes that I've made off. And you can also use a spoon for this, but why dirty more dishes? And now that we're on to the strawberries, I'm gonna use the smallest of knives that I have because really I am just cutting out the center piece here, that little hard bit. And I'm really only gonna do this to about half of the strawberries that I have, just because I do like to leave some of them whole, I think it looks really nice. And if now you're asking yourself, how am I gonna impress those self-proclaimed Instagram foodies? Well, why not get exotic with uh, some dragon fruit? And exotic this one really was. Now I was used to dragon fruit being white with those little black specks in the middle, but when I cut this one open and saw that it was red, I was kind of blown away. So after a quick Google search, I found out that dragon fruit do indeed come in multiple different colors, and uh, it just depends on which kind that you get. And as you can see, we definitely have the variety for this fruit platter taken care of. So comment down below to tell me uh, what kinds of fruit that you would add to your fruit platters. And I mean, the color of this thing is really wicked. It's not so much red as it is like a purplish red. It's just incredible looking. And now we're going to quickly make some salted caramel. This is going to make for an amazing dipping sauce. I'm going to have a link down below to a video, one of my first videos actually, where I show you how to make caramel. Uh, so here it is again, just me making a very simple salted caramel sauce. And it will really go great with a lot of the different fruits that we have. And I mean, just look at that kind of drip that we're getting. A perfect consistency. And when it comes to the final assembly of a fruit platter, your really only limitation is uh, the size of the bowl or the size of the table that you're building this on. So here I have just about the largest bowl that I could possibly find. And I'm gonna fill the bottom up with ice, not only to keep all the fruit cold because this ain't fitting in your fridge. So you're gonna want it to be as cold as possible while it's even on the table and people are picking at it throughout the night. But be creative, the sky's the limit. I'm also using the ice to add a bit more depth and a few more different levels to this fruit platter. Just makes everything look that much more interesting uh, and it makes it look even fuller. So with all of the main fruits added, I'm going to now add all the different garnishes, the apples, the grapes, the strawberries, throw in some blackberries here and there, even some blueberries on top of everything. Again, the variety is really gonna make this stand out. And look to see where you can add fruits next to each other that have contrasting colors. That's gonna make all of the individual fruits pop out. And of course, when you're done, don't be afraid to snack on some fruit because it is healthy and you worked hard, so why not treat yourself? And of course, to finish off this fruit platter, now we're gonna add in some of our fancy cheeses. Here we have a thing of double cream brie, some gorgonzola, which is really funky, some goat cheese that's infused with some blueberries, as well as some walnuts that I'm going to now toss in some honey. And of course, some dark chocolate squares because dark chocolate goes great with really any type of fruit. And after all of your hard work, you have one amazing looking fruit platter that is sure to impress just about anyone because not only do you have some amazing flavors in the sides, but you also have amazing flavors and variety in the actual fruit that you chose for this. Again, be creative, choose the different fruits that you really do enjoy, and uh, go to town with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook for some future uh, recipes, and uh, yeah, peace.